Well, hello and welcome. My name is Andrew Slayton, and I am going to do a little tutorial for you here today on some post-processing techniques using Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop. Um, I prefer Adobe Lightroom Classic. Um, they do have a newer CC version, uh, but it's it's a little dumbed down. I think um, I don't. It doesn't give you all the control that you have with uh, the Classic version. Um, I'm going to show you focus stacking with this particular image here from the Eastern Sierra. So the basic premise is um, when you're talking a three shot focus stacked image, which is typically what I do. I don't usually do any more than three in general. Um, what you're talking is shooting a foreground image that's sharp on the foreground, middle ground, sharp on the middle ground and then sharp on the background. And then you're blending these together so that you have what we call hyper focus. All right, so let's jump in. Here's the original raw file. Nothing has been done to it. It's been imported and that's it. So the first thing is we're gonna look at these. See, now you can probably tell, let's go ahead and just get on this. So this is my foreground image here, right? So I focused here on the foreground, this cool little cactus. And then the rest of it is out of focus. I'm at F11 on all of these images, so three images at F11 should be plenty. So there's my foreground, the first one. Then we've got our middle ground. There we go. And that's, you know, that almost gets that background sharp too, but not quite. And then in this third one, we're going to really have a sharp background. There's the Eastern Sierra all lit up back there. All right. So we've got a foreground, middle ground, background. So first thing we're going to do is kind of a basic develop setting on all three of these. We're going to uh, we're going to do it on one of them and then apply it to all three because we want it to look uniform through each one. So I'm going to come in here and do a couple of things. I'm not going to mess with contrast. I'm going to bring these highlights back a little bit. And I'm keeping an eye on this histogram up here, top right. Um, this is really, really important. I've covered histograms in, in other videos, but if you're new to them, it's basically just a mathematical graph of the light in your image. This side over here being the, um, the shadows, and then through the midtones into the highlights over here. Um, so we're not technically clipping. We are actually clipping on the shadows right here, as you can see. That's going to tell you here's where we're clipping. Now that doesn't bother me. When I say clipping, that just means we've lost information in the shadows right there. That doesn't bother me. That's not important. But one of the things that we can do to sort of bring that back is option click on this dot and then bring our black point up just a little bit. And then there we go. You can see we've got a little bit of space there. So let me go back here. Um, we've brought our highlights down just a little bit. We may not even need to bring them down that much. I might just leave it. Let's go back up a little bit because I'm probably going to use a gradient filter down there. You know, shadows, I don't really like opening those up too much. It kind of depends on the image, but on this image, I really am not going to do much with that. I'm really not going to do much here. Maybe bring the whites down just a little bit and then crunch the blacks just a little bit to get some contrast in there. Now, I'm going to add contrast in a different way here in a second with my tone curve. I like having this new feature, the texture, is really kind of nice. It just uh, accentuates these pixels um, and lets the texture shine through a little bit. I know that's super technical, the way I just said that. I'm going to enhance this just a little bit um, with texture clarity and dehaze, just a tiny bit. You really don't want to overdo these. But that's going to help right there. Let's see what our before and after is. I always like to have this view. See, it's pretty subtle, but we're just basing, basically making it a little bit more crisp. I'm going to bump the vibrance just a little bit in the saturation, just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and option click here, kind of in the midtones, and then a little bit up in the highlights. And we're going to just manually add a little bit of contrast here. See how that guy gives it a little bit more of a pop. I'm not going to mess with hue, saturation, luminance, and color really right now, or split toning. I'm going to come into detail, though, and I want to see, so, so we know that none of this is going to be very sharp. So we're really just concerned with the areas where we actually had focus. So I can kind of see right there. 
what I'm going to do is hold the Option key down, and I'm actually going to bring up the Masking slider, and it's going to show me what I'm actually affecting here. Um, it's all kind of done by feel, so don't be afraid to kind of feel your way through it. A and your style is going to change a little bit. I'm holding the Option key as I slide all of these because it's going to show me a little bit better contrast preview to be able to tell what I'm doing. To me, that looks pretty darn good. I'm going to zoom in. Yeah, see, it looks clean. It doesn't look over sharpened. It's got a lot crisper detail to it. Okay, so that looks good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the remove chromatic aberration and the enable lens profile correction. Um, and it just automatically recognizes what I'm shooting with. So I'm shooting with a 16 to 35 here at 16 millimeters. It's correcting a little bit of that lens distortion and the um, vignetting, um, which I really don't generally like much vignetting at all in my landscape images. So I really like that this has corrected that for me. Now, the only thing though, is that it actually really lightened this sky, which is fine because I already had some plans for that. Now I'm gonna leave everything else um, on the default. And then I'm gonna come up here to my um, toolbar and I'm gonna grab my gradient filter. And this is basically just like having, you know, one, two, three stop filter with you while you're shooting. However, the benefit to this is that you're not actually putting any extra glass that might be scratched or nicked up in front of your lens. Um, I've always been a big believer in getting it right in camera. I'm still that way, but I have noticed that there is a benefit to actually doing this um, in post-production at this point. So I'm gonna drag that down and try to feather it here so that it's not noticeable. One of the other ways to help it not be so noticeable is bump up your shadows just a little bit. I might just go down a stop. I don't want any contra extra contrast. I want to bring those highlights down and then I kind of want to see what temperature we want to go. Usually I like cooler tones, but in this image I may want it to warm up. Now I like the warmth. I really, I want a blue sky. I don't want a strange tinted sky. Um, it has a little bit of a green tint to it, so I'm going to add back a little bit of the magenta. That helps, but probably what I'm going to have to do is bring down another gradient right here and just make it blue. Okay, let's see what that, yeah, that's a little too much. The The highlights here are pretty hot, so um, I am a little bothered by that. So let's go ahead and try this radial tool here. And this way we can kind of just pop right in there. Okay, I'm going to take down that. Let's invert this so we're only affecting that area. That's obviously way too strong. So we're going to back off of that quite a bit. We do not want clarity or dehaze on that. That seems to be helping with the before and after. It's just bringing that down just a little bit. And actually, we want to pull this straight across and then potentially expand this out a little bit just to cover those peaks. So I think that's looking quite a bit better. Let's see if we want to, okay, we don't want to go overboard with the warmth, but I like a little bit more in there. Okay, that's good. I'm going to bring, like I said, one more gradient down like this. I'm going to turn everything here off. I don't want it doing anything other than Give me a little bit more blue in that sky. That's better. I like that. I want to open up the foreground here. Now, oftentimes I'm doing a lot of this sky work, these these gradual filters, the radial and the um, gradient. Um, knowing that, so I'm going to exaggerate them a little bit, knowing that I want to lighten up some of this. So I might actually bring this one down even a little bit more just because I know I'm going to overall lighten the image. I'm going to come back here to the overall image and I'm going to lighten a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to go in manually and bump it up to basically light 5700, somewhere in there. The rest of that looks fine to me. It may need a little bit of magenta to balance out the green. 
Yeah. Okay. That's starting to look good. Basically, what we're wanting to do is get our basic look at this point. So that looks pretty good to me. So what I'm going to do now is select all three of these, and then I'm going to sync. And I'm going to apply everything to all three of them. Okay, so we're ready to open them up in Photoshop now. And so you can see that they're all the same. We've applied the settings from one to all three of them. Now, you will also notice, though, that there's a little bit of shifting going on in between each of these. And that's actually called focal length breathing. Even though I was on a tripod, just changing the focal length is going to make that shift happen just a little bit. So don't be alarmed by that. So let's go ahead and what we're going to do is we're going to right click. We're going to say edit in and then we're going to say open as layers in Photoshop. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go in here. And I want to zoom and I want to see which layers are which and I want to rename them. And really, there's not a huge need for that, but it helps me. And if my computer would like to cooperate, there we go. All right, so this is our background layer here. So I'm just going to double click there and I'm going to say back, which means that this one here is my middle ground, mid. And then that just leaves our lovely foreground. There she is. Four. Okay. All right, so first things first, since we did have a little bit of focal length breathing, what we want to do is align these layers and it's a lot easier than you might think. So what I'm going to do is actually select all three of these layers, right? And I'm going to go over here to edit. And I'm going to say auto align layers, please. And Photoshop's going to do the work for me, right? I'm going to just tell it to do auto. I don't need vignette removal or geometric distortion. We'll just say OK. So it's going to do a little work here, and then it's going to make sure that they are all aligned properly. Boom, and she's done. All right, so what it's done is it has aligned these layers. I like to keep the same aspect ratio. I don't know about you, but that's just my thing. So I'm going to hold the shift down. Okay, so there we go. Looks lovely now, doesn't it? All right, so we've got one more thing we need to do in order to properly focus stack this image. Basically, what we're going to do is tell Photoshop to only to blend the layers, but only show the sharp parts of each layer. So the way we're going to do that is select all three of our layers, and we're going to go back up to Edit, and then just above Auto Blend Layers, or just below auto align layers is auto blend layers. We're going to go ahead and click that. We're going to stack them. And we're going to do seamless tones and colors. And say OK. Go Photoshop, go. Lovely, it's done. So you can look over here and kind of see what Photoshop has done. It's created a mask on each one of these layers um, to delete out the, the parts of the image that are out of focus. So let's go ahead and zoom in and see if it did what we wanted it to do. So far, so good. I'm seeing foreground super sharp, middle ground lovely, very sharp, all the way to the background quite sharp. So it looks good to me. So what I'm going to do is merge down, and that's a Shift Option Command E, and that's going to create a visible layer for us that we can work on from there. Now, you could just delete these if you wanted to. Everything looks good. Okay, cool, so now we're just working from this one layer. So that's the basis of focus stacking. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, feel free to leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. I am happy to help. Um, I hope this has been illuminating for you. Thanks for watching.